Hi there, welcome to Bardscraft. Most of you seem to like this simple dwarf terrain, so let's make more. A king he was of carven throne, in many pillar halls of stone, with golden roof and silver floor, and runes of power upon the door. The light of sun and star and moon in shining lamps of crystals hued. Undimmed by cloud or shade of night, the shone forever fair. I store many of my junk boxes, but most importantly, the oats. These smaller ones have been laying around until this day, so now you can witness the creation of simple dwarf terrain. I will use these as big blocks of dwarven architecture. Something like this, and the throne goes here. Should look pretty good. The hall will be open here. And of course, these bits can be used as buildings, platforms, you can even build a city. Yeah, let's begin. First, some cardstock strips shall be made. Two centimeter wide bits should work well to grant superior dwarven aesthetics. Hmm. I then folded the strips in half. If you do this, don't worry about uneven folds or damage. It will just look better. Before I did anything else, more of these strips are required. This build requires plenty of cardstock, so if you happen to run out, you have to acquire the Oats Brother. Next, these strips are glued onto the edges. I was going to use hot glue instead of PVA glue, but I had little left, so I wanted to save it. Yeah, first, just cover the long edges. Then, cut off the excess. After that, cover the shorter edges. Here I was able to use the cut-off excess bits. Hmm, hot glue does make this much easier. It can be tricky to get the pieces to stay in place with PVA glue, so this saves you some time and sanity. Great, now I've got PVA and hot glue on my hands. With these hands I then covered the remaining edges. Apply glue first, then place in your strip. After that, cut off the excess. This here makes a bit more sense than the previous shot. Now it's just to finish the rest. I'm down to three little glue sticks. Hope it's enough. Mouth cam. Yes, I'm holding the camera in my mouth. It's a pretty good angle. Who needs a GoPro anyway? This craft requires more glue and cardstock than expected, but it is now done. And apparently I glued in something here. Yeah, I guess it will stay there. Dwarf approved corners coming up. Here I made a piece that is easiest described as three squares, with the corners cut off. I used this as a template for the rest, and I was really happy to cut out 32 of these wretched corners. Yes, I'm done. These are easy to glue on with just one dab of hot glue per side. With the methods used, these will become the sturdiest cocoa boxes the world has ever seen. You may think that these just look like boxes. Well, you're entirely right. So let's start by adding details to this box. The throne will go under here, and over that a bright gem shall shine. An electric tea light in this case. I cut out a hole on the bottom, so I can place in the light. Well, should have planned this better. I ripped out the inner layer of cardstock and made a hole in the front. Just a square. And then I glued in the candle using the little hot glue I had left. Yes, it works. Good. Then I glued on these cardstock bits around the light, followed by these two transparent plastic bits. The glue will become more transparent as it dries. Okay, here is something interesting. My super simple dwarven drone. Those are all of the cardboard pieces used. I assembled these together with plenty of glue. The king will surely like this. Next, I cut strips to cover the edges of the cardboard. If you need to get cutting tools and other supplies for simple crafts, I have set up recommended products on my website and in the descriptions. By purchasing through these links of monetization, you help fund these videos at no extra cost. Thanks. Then I glued on the cardstock strips. 
This can be a major pain in the butt if you have run out of hot glue, but when using straight measured pieces it's not that tricky. There, all the edges are now covered. I left some overhang on these bits, then added small pieces as extra detail. If you have any extra pieces from miniatures, they would surely fit around the throne, shields, spears and so on. For the next step I cut out a bunch of different pieces to cover the rest of the empty surfaces of our dwarven box terrain. Imagine pieces you can use as pillars, doors and just as ornaments. Squares and long strips. Nothing too round or anything that looks remotely elven. Elf locker room. Ew, battle. Dwarf locker room. Enough. This is what I made. You don't have to cover every side. These kind of arcs over doors do look quite nice. For extra dry brushing satisfaction, you can stack several layers of cardstock bits, as I've done here. We need stairs, don't we? This should be enough room for miniatures. I'll make better ones from foam and perhaps with a printer. More of that later. By the way, if you like the idea of my channel climbing up the ranks and you enjoy the content, be sure to subscribe, hammer that like and say something dwarven in the comments below. No runes of power yet, but definitely a silver floor. The oat box is just the right size. Yes! I shall keep it simple because I'll probably use this 0.5 times in my entire D&D career. Anyway, I glued on these cardstock squares and left this area empty where the box behind the throne will be. And on top of each medium square bit, smaller ones fit. Good, I'll just spray everything with black. You can also do this by brush. This might actually be better than spray, because there are lots of hidden surfaces that the spray doesn't reach. Well then, I'm just bad with the spray. Luckily I remembered to cover the light, I painted the rest by brush. Didn't think of the red cardstock earlier. Well, the background of the light shall be red then. When painting these I'll try to make the colors go along with the dwarven stronghold. Let's start with the grey dry brush. I got a nice painted surface by painting diagonally in two directions. The streaks, or in this case the stone textures, are easily done with a pretty coarse brush. I painted each piece like this, with a moderate amount of paint on the brush. All these edges and strips take the paint really well. Here on the stairs I made a small mistake. Some dwarf is gonna get fired. I also dry brushed the floor with grey, but quite gently. I put the floor aside and made the grey a bit lighter. With this I dry brushed over everything again. That's a bit too much first, but then again, with a messy paint job our flat surfaces won't look too uniform. After a healthy amount of brushing noises, Your cocoa boxes should look something like this. At some places I got spots of excessive paint, can be fixed by dark wash or just ignored for now. Next I painted selected areas with copper. I left many small pieces unpainted, there will be more. The edges of the copper bits can be painted with gold, and later I might add some dark wash. Here we can add some gold for his royal ass. Ok, I'll paint on some bolts or rivets later, as I did with the dwarven ship, that seemed to work really well. I recommend watching that video after this one. Here I am dry brushing with a tan. The idea is to paint the corners lighter and to add more highlights on the edges. This looks quite good, as does this one. It's surprising how careless you can be at painting terrain while the results remain good. Moving on to the floor next, I simply dry brushed this with silver. You could paint some of the squares gold or copper, I just kept it clean and simple. All of these painting mistakes I made will not go unshamed. I covered spots of shame with a diluted black paint. I also used this on some of the gold and copper bits. 
The rivets or bolts are easily painted just as little dots. I used a tan for this. I recommend painting these dots on anything mechanical or metallic. It just works. Here I messed around with the little brush and made some details around the drone. This does work well as a dwarven hall made out of stone and metal. With some modification, perhaps you can make a huge gate that works. The drone is worthy of a war chant, and what is this? Yes, it just so happens that this fits with the tower from the dwarven stronghold. Perhaps at last the dwarves find their home homes, only to face hordes of undead. Or even worse, elves. What else can we make with junk? Watch this episode to learn more about simple materials and techniques to create your own terrain and miniatures. Claim your free inspiration by subscribing to Bard's Craft. Next, some more epic shots.